Hey there, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is all about teaching tips for new college instructors. Today's video is about the free project management tool Trello, and I have a whole collection of Trello boards for academics that I've linked below, covering topics like publications in progress, meal prep, semester planning, to-do lists, and more. So if it interests you, it's completely free, and you can see it again in the description box. Today I'm going over the basic functions of Trello and how to use it in case you've never used a system before. Uh, you can go ahead and get a sense of how it works with this video. So let's go ahead and get started. The boards in my free collection all have various cards here that have elements used to kind of show you how to curate cards that have more than just, you know, words on them. So in this case, for example, there are descriptions on each of these cards, which you can see the little icon below the words, for example, fall 2020. So when you click in, you'll notice that the description has information and that's why that icon appears. So in this video, I'm going to go over just some basics of Trello. But first, I want to do something that's not as you know intuitive on Trello, but I think it's very helpful. So for example, Again, you have here, this is just an overall to-do list for like major elements of life as an academic. So for fall 2020, if you click this, you know, one important thing to do is if you do add attachments and choose from Trello, you can search for a board name. So for example, I have, I can just search SEM and then my semester schedule weekly board pops up. So I'm going to click that and now you can see it's attached here. So now, whenever I go to this board, I can click on this card and I can say, all right, I wanna see my weekly schedule. And then here is a different board that has you know, every single week listed out on its own list. And so as you can see here, you can color code your cards as well. So for example, all my cards that are green relate to my first class. All my cards that are yellow will relate to my second. This orange one will relate, will relate to committee meetings. Okay, so you can really connect boards with each other in that way. And so again, going back to my to-do list, I can have you know the fall 2020 board connected for my teacher to-dos, and then publications in progress, which is a separate board as well. I can attach that one too, and so on and so forth. So one tip here is, for example, if you have, let's say you're working on your dissertation or on a book manuscript, you could have a board for each chapter and then you could have a separate board that has, okay, you know, here is my research to do's. I'm going to connect each of those boards depending on where I am in the process. So I have the publications in progress board here. And so I could have, maybe I'm in the drafting phase of my second chapter. And so I could have a card that says chapter two, and again, attach the whole board. And on that board, I have a breakdown of tasks and project planning in more minute detail but it's not cluttering up this board, which is publications in progress, okay? So again, that process is very simple. You just click on the card that you create, say add attachment, choose from Trello, and then point out the one you want to attach to that card. Okay, other than that, again, let's go over some basics. So, you know, to curate these lists is very simple. All you do is go to the end, click add list, and give it a title. Okay, so for example, this and then click add. And then you add cards. So again, here is one and here is another. So you can add as many cards as you like. You can also move them around. So you just click and drag wherever you want them to appear. Okay, and in whatever order you want them to appear. When you go into a card, you have a lot of options here. So you can add description to this card and that includes the links that are hyperlinked. You can add a due date and if you do that it will pop up on the actual card itself. I'll show you in a second. Labels, you have different color options and when you click this pen icon you can name that particular color. Right. So again maybe this color will connect to one particular course. You click done, click on that and now it's labeled. You can add more than one label to um, the same card and taking it off is very simple as well. You just click on it. Members, if you know other people who are in Trello, you can add them to boards so that they can edit them, them as well. Uh, so basically creating a team in case you're doing group work. A great one is a checklist. 
And so it's exactly what it sounds like. So let's say this card is about doing some, some sort of project. You can have, okay, well, you know, what's the first task and what's the second and so on and so forth. And so you list them all out there. And then what you can do is once you finish each task, you can just click and then it, it obviously crosses it out saying that it's been done. Okay, so these are some basics here. For add attachments, you can have quite a few, not just other boards, but you can attach a file, a photo, whatever the case may be. And when you add a photo, the photo actually pops up onto the card itself, so you can see it very easily immediately when you go into the board. Okay, so let's go ahead and, as you can see here, you know, test, it has the deadline, it has how many tasks you've already accomplished, and it has a color designating it for that certain label. Once you're finished with a list or you don't want it anymore, you can go ahead and just say archive the list and it disappears. Now, if a board is a public board, that means you can copy it onto your own account. So there's tons of public boards that are created by people every day. And so if it's a public board, you go to the top right. This is on my iPad. You click the ellipses and then you click that copy button, which you see on the top right here, the two rectangles, one in front of the other. You go ahead and click that and you can give it a name, right? You know, you can say who can see it and whether or not you wanna keep the cards. Once you add that all in, you click Create and it adds that board onto your personal account and now you can edit it and do whatever you want with it and the public board stays the same for anybody else who wants to copy it, but yours in particular is now yours to do with as you will. Once you have the board itself or you create a board, you can go ahead again on this top right and the little um, gear icon, the settings icon, you can go ahead and change the name of the board, what team it's assigned to, the background, right? So I have this image as a background, but there's, you can do a color or you can choose a photo. There's tons here to choose from and you can search by different topics as well, right? So you can choose a background that best fits your interest. Um, you can say show card covers. So that means that when there's an image included on with a card, it shows as a cover. If you don't want them showing automatically, you can go ahead and undo that option. You can add the labels, you know, and so on and so forth, right? And so who can see it? This one's public. Who can comment on it? If you want to add members, all right? So if you have a team. So these are just some board settings that you can choose from. These top ones are the, are the main ones that you would use. And then just note here next to where it says public on the top right here, that little star. If you click that star, it's going to be added to your favorites. So now on your main uh, Trello page, you can see starred boards and now it's up there. So it's automatically at the very top of your app when you open it. Then you have recent boards, depending on how recently you opened it. And then just all your boards listed underneath. And if you have team boards, that will appear underneath that as well. Okay, so again, since I started with ones that I already created, to create a board is very simple. The top right, you click that plus sign and you go ahead and say, okay, I wanna create a board, right? And then give it a name, again, choose visibility and its background, and you go ahead and create it. If you wanna invite somebody to edit the board and have it as well, right there, when you click on the ellipses, right, to make that pop up, you go ahead and click invite, and you can search for somebody to email saying, hey, why don't you join this board? If you want to add a description to the board, you can go ahead and say about this board and you can see, you know, the description and you can add in whatever description you'd like. Now going to the specific cards, let's say you click on project one here and you click the ellipses, you can do a few things here. So you can duplicate the card, so you create an exact copy of it and then you can go ahead and edit it however you'd like, or if you wanted it to stay the same, but let's say go to do two different lists, then you can move it around wherever you'd like as well. Click it again, go to the ellipses. You can also, you know, um, archive the card if you no longer want it to appear on the main board, or you can say move card, and then you say where do you want to move it to, and you can move it to a different board altogether. And then one final small detail, if you want to see all your boards, but don't want to actually exit out of your current one, on the top right here, just click that little Trello icon and it pops up all your different boards. And so you can look at them and go, from, go to them from here as well. Remember to check out the Trello boards link below. And if you have any questions about the tool, go ahead and let me know as well in the comment section. If you haven't clicked like or subscribe yet, now's the time to do so.